tell you what, boys, I've got the need. The need for Reed. West Coast are back in finals. Fuck yeah. Win the premiership. <laughs> yeah. Winning a flag. Premiership Woo-hoo. next year, 2024. West Coast Eagles, Harley uh. Reed. Takes are coming. I told you all along it was going to happen. <laughs> Nothing else. No, no other result was ever going to happen. Just uh, Harley Reed. Harley and they get the fucking job done. Reed. They've done it. They've picked him number one. They didn't trade it. There was so much speculation. And they made the right. They made the best call. They made the mm. absolute right call. There's a lot of talk mm. about them getting more mm. talent. But you know what? You didn't want more talent? Well, the thing is, there's no pressure now. Nah. There's no pressure that West Coast have made a wrong call. Oh, there's pressure, mate. No, 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 there's no pressure now on, on like with the decision right. that West Coast have made because yeah. like, oh, yeah, they, yeah, they course, had to yeah. pick him, right? But yeah. if they split it and then... And then he went on to play 300 it, mate, three brown lows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you, you've made a bad call. So I, I like it. Um, I was hoping we'd get Dan Curtin with a sneaky swap of our future first. Didn't but happen. What, well, they, I mean, I'm not sure what they offered, but if they offered the future first, GWS would have laughed at it because it would have been pick 18 because we're going to finish top that's of the ladder true. and win the flag. That's, that's probably that's why. why they, <laughs> they said, yeah. guys, do you want our future 2025, 2026? <laughs> um, and no. Gogo said, uh, GWS said, no, no. that'll be pick 18, 18 and 18. Yeah, Plus all of North track. Melbourne's future compensation that they're going to keep getting. Gold <laughs> wow. Coast um, yeah. Academy players will probably end up being pick 30. So the draft just happened. There's a few things it's I'd happening like to... happening. Like, yeah, it is. Mm. Oh, a couple of things. So West Coast might get someone we won't know. Um, I maybe don't think so. Nick pick Will- 23? Does that happen? Is that tomorrow night, though? It could be. No, no. Oh, it's, well, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care tonight. anymore. I'm not employed there. You don't I work do for it. West Coast anymore. I don't work for West Coast. I Open. speak freely. I don't care anymore. Open the gates, Chelsea. Us everything that happened. No, I, no, I won't. I no, what, 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 what did you think they should have done with the pick now that you've got a bit of you know, f- hindsight? Uh, I think it's probably not like just to you toss, toss the coin, you do whatever you want. It's a win win. I think it's a good idea to, to take him because he either stays there, loves it, and he's a gun forever with the boy and Elijah, Poor or boy. he is a gun, which he is a gun, but in three years he wants to leave and you just get another first, you know, probably, a, you know, you probably pr- get, he's probably better. Yeah, he's better in three years, and then you probably get a first like pick number one for him again. And and he'd only probably be he'd leaving if West Coast was shit, right? And yeah. so the compensation for him will be a high draft pick. Well, it'd be like Horn Francis leaving. No, but would get the compensation? They'd be trading him. You'd he'll be trading a three-year yeah. deal now, and yeah, right. Trading him, and yep. he's going to be worth more in three years than he is right now. Mm-hmm. So you'll get be, you'll get pick one and something else for him in three years. I reckon it's such well, it's such an unknown right now. But it's it's Chris Judd type areas for West Coast. Yeah. West Coast wouldn't go and give him number nine with not knowing that he, like without backing him in to be just the best player ever. Well, they're not going to give him. They're not going to give him thirty one. Well, I thought they were going to give him thirteen, <laughs> but then they gave that to Noah Long, who's also a star. Yeah, he is. So West Coast midfield, uh, Ruben Jimby, the boy, boy Elijah yeah. Hewitt, I, who I he's a gun. I think he's. I don't know. I just got got something about feelings him. about him that. He'll, 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 he'll probably win a BNF in, yeah, in the Yeah, uh, he's got future. big star factor and then put Harley Red in. But that midfield, how do you feel? I I couldn't be happier. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sweating because like, it's so hot, but yeah, also... They're the all very, very good. Like Dan, Elijah Hewitt is a cleaner cut off the field. A clean cut, uh, D- Kerr, Daniel Kerr. Like plays very, very much like a fucking gun, Kerr. Yep. On field, oh, and Daniel then Kerr, right. yeah, not, I think you're saying Daniel Curtin, but you're no, just no, stopping no, no, at Tane. No, Daniel Kerr, oh. a clean cut version of him, who is a fucking star, and that midfield is just stacking up to be. Mm. I actually also heard that Daniel Curtin wasn't ready to guard um, AFL forwards that will defend AFL forwards, so I don't even want him. Yeah, but they think he's even a midfielder. He's like 195 yeah. centimeters midfielder. Adelaide didn't have him. I didn't want him in you the first place. Him, I didn't nah, Dan didn't want him. Mate, Ryan Daniels, finger on the pulse, big Rhino. Mm-hmm. He said. That West Coast were on the phone to GWS and Adelaide got a better deal in front of you them. You just got to wonder what they offered because Adelaide's deal, it can't have been. They can't have said, "Here's the first round next year," because GWS would have said. Thank but what you. else? Yeah, because what else would they have? They could pick them, give them pick twenty three and thirty nine or whatever. The, Which they're not going to do for pick nine. No, exactly. And then no, maybe a couple of first, like maybe a future second. They're just anyway. It was an arrogant offer, whatever it was. A shit arrogant offer that yeah. didn't work, and Dan Curtin's now at Adelaide. Yeah, cor- that's the correct summary <laughs> yeah. of what just happened. The offer—I don't know what was happening in the uh, in the old fossils box, but it was a shit arrogant offer that didn't work. Back to our uh, power by Fleet Network this year. Show Nova Ted yourself at least. Um, now, speaking I- of fossils, one last thing on the on the. Oh, we'll okay. probably keep talking about the draft. The West Coast draft war room, whatever you guys call it over there mm. in the AFL. Yeah. I don't want to be too critical here, but no, no. I'm just. It's curious that you you, you saw a, a bunch of clubs, right? And, and Gold Coast the, had some work experience. Kids um, in, a mixture of a 14 year old. I would think that youth would the way that and Hammer, you've seen this being at the football club and yep. being a coach of the AFLW team. 
uh, the younger players coming into the system right now, if you're 50, 60 years old, I, I would say it's difficult to connect and understand how these kids operate. Mate, I'm 35 yeah. and and I look at these kids like, geez, it's a different batch. I would think in your recruiting department, you would need at least one, two, three people that minimum. are very close to that age. Like a, a few things. So I looked at... We saw, don't have that. <clears throat> you saw Geelong's. Geelong, yep. who have been just a perennial juggernaut at the draft, have this is always Geelong, Geelong yeah, always kept it fresh. They've just they've never dropped like they haven't dropped off since I've been watching football. Correct. And it's because they keep things updated and Stephen they, Wells is the head of that football department. Yep. Right? And they've got a lot of younger people through that. Oh, yeah. Like it just looked fresh. Looked young. Anyway, I looked at West Coast one. The thing about like senior people who know they obviously know a lot about football, but like I had my dad here the other on the weekend, and he sits there and he's being be careful on social media and hate mate. That's just the way of the world. Like all these new kids are living in a new world that half the the majority of that box didn't wouldn't know. So you just can't connect with them on any on any level whatsoever. I other change, than just kicking a football. I want to change tact. Sure. Uh, I just want to quote someone who works for us here at Back Chat. Mm-hmm. Um, we're having a discussion before. There's a few beers. You had a big night during, on the yeah. weekend. You've had a big Went weekend. Went to the 40th. An enormous, yep. Um, and, and we will get to that to cover that. But I think sort of bringing all that together, and we went to the NBL. Um, oh, yeah. He was there. And yep. Fistball, things going on. Quote from Indy, who works with us here at Backchat. Mm-hmm. I have never had a hangover. That was quote unquote. That's a lie. I've, Verbatim I've as well. I've never had a hangover. <laughs> She tried to reverse over it back, you know, back over it like a Nathan Buckley type operator, but didn't quite get <laughs> oh, the job I've never had properly. a hangover. She she says that big night, she's blacking out, she can't think, she's that <laughs> cooked, but she sits on the end of the bed, she has a specific water bottle that she fills up and she makes herself scull it and it's a rule, she's not allowed to go to sleep before she finishes a one litre bottle and she's never had a hangover because of it. That may or may not be true. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask... Hangover cures. Have, have you got any? Because me personally, I have absolutely no routine to stop getting hungover. I get way too pissed. I'm lucky to get into my bed. <laughs> Clothes unclothed. Don't know what's happening. I wake up in the morning and I've got like it's my own bodily horrible, fluids yeah. all over me. That's pretty much how yeah. I operate. Well, Does anyone have something so that actually... I took something out of your... A leaf out of your book. Well, this you, is something I'd heard. It's not what yeah. I do. So, um, anti-inflammatory yeah, before anti-inflammatory you sleep. is not a bad one. Um, because nah. the worst part of the hangover for me is like the headache. It's like... It's brutal in, in the morning. It's like that pain. But if the... I assume that my head... My brain's just like Did inflamed or something. And it's hitting my yeah. skull. <laughs> Did it work? Like you, you were it, late to fistball training. Yeah. Very. <laughs> Not that late, but and a little bit. you were hungover because I could see it. Yeah, but, I, but I, sto- I stopped drinking beer at around midnight and I was just drinking water. And I think that helped like it would have. alleviate I mean, really some having, of the symptoms. It's not really having a crack either. Yeah, that isn't. No. That's, pretty, yeah, that's gutless. But you know, I'll sing about, that. That I'll sing about fistball in the morning. Of course. It's a, it's I'll like, sing about fistball. You, you fucking weren't. You were fucking late. <laughs> and you fucking text fistball. me saying, hey, mate, I'm going an all-nighter tonight. I'm yeah. coming straight to fistball yeah. training. <laughs> Didn't I, happen. I said, good luck. Actually, there is one. So how do you get not get hungover? Stop drinking. Just drink water at midnight. Okay, Dan. Just don't drink. The best technique is, yeah, just not having a beer. Yeah. So, <laughs> touche, Hamish. Uh, uh, this is a bit of an interesting one, and again, I don't do this all the time. It depends on how pissed because you sometimes you just get pissed. You come home, you don't even know if yeah. if you left or right footed, and then you just go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will, if I can remember, always make myself throw up. Always. Wow. And I've heard that wow. quite like I've heard a lot of people say you're not really like you're always still absorbing the alcohol. I am looking at a lot of fluid coming out of my body. I know there's some alcohol left in that that I otherwise would have absorbed. So yep. that's my first port of call. Yes. Always, no matter what, get home and make myself vomit. How do you do that? Stick my fingers as far back down my throat as mm. I can. Flick the little uvula or whatever the hell it's called, and then <laughs> everywhere. I got a couple. I'll show you a video of it. No, no, I know how to do it. Anyway, so that's what I do. That's my first thing that I do when I get home. <laughs> my second thing is I obviously uh, rinse your mouth out, and then I go to the pantry <laughs> Good. and I get a big spoonful of Vegemite and eat that because at that point you're pissed. You don't care what shit tastes like, and it's disgusting. But it's just salt, and then I scull a bottle of water, what? so the salt retains the water a bit better. Oh. The Vegemite has a shitload of salt in it. And you so eat a spoonful of Vegemite. Spoonful of Vegemite, drink a big bottle of water, go to bed. This sounds uh, scripted, but we don't ever speak to Hamish no. about anything we're doing on this show because it turns out better. <laughs> yeah. You fucking get home yep. and eat. I'm going to try that next Seriously, time. Seriously, because well, salt retains the water and yep. I don't want to sit there. I mean, I, would. I mean, would you just have a tablespoon of salt? Yeah, but like, you just then have to crack the salt. It's like, just eat some Vegemite 
and then have a big swig of do water. Do you then, because you said you, you rinse your mouth out after the spew, but you're happy just to have the yep. Vegemite in there. Yeah. You, another rinse out? or No, you? I go and brush my teeth if I can remember and then go to bed. But yeah, I'm happy to go to bed with Vegemite in my mouth. I'm just horrific. I'm, yeah. I'm horrific. I, you just go sometimes, but sometimes that's, you just you get home, you're pissed and you just spew up all over yourself and then wake up. Bit, so, bit, of, bit, of, food, bit of food when you can, I think sometimes mm. helps. Oh, no, no, no sensible answers, please. Like the, the tablespoon of vegetable <laughs> is very fucking helpful. I'm a sensible guy. Uh, but thank you, India. So if anyone yeah. can find India hangover in the next, I don't know, a couple of years, that'd be nice. she's never experienced <laughs> one in her life. Well, fucking hell, if you had been on the weekend that we've all just been on. My you, God. Where should we start? Actually, uh, sorry. you start, Dan. Do you know what? Um, Happy, bu- Happy birthday to me. Yep. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dan. Happy birthday to you. Hip hooray, hip hooray, hip hooray. Well done, <laughs> Dan. Dan's birthday. 35? Is there uh, 34? Is there 700 meatballs being catered for me? Somewhere. Could be. James Heard, shout We're out gonna to you. We're going to have a thousand tequila shots. <laughs> <laughs> and Indy's going to wake up tomorrow morning. Fine. <laughs> Go for a cycle. Get up, win the morning. Carpe diem, seize the day. Win the morning, win the day. Win win the the morning, morning. The day. Yeah, he's fucking, fucking made out dead. of tequila in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> win the morning, win the day. Tough when you're dead. What um, what actually did help with my hangover was sweating it out um, oh, gotcha. the next the next well, morning. Well, welcome to the fucking house of pain. And <laughs> back chat right now. I'm we, wet. <laughs> hey, wet. Just before you continue, Dan. Yeah. Dan's hangover cure so far is stop drinking and drink water and then sweat. <laughs> yeah. All real things that happen that aren't superstitious, but are just proven facts. <laughs> well, we're not talking about superstition. We're talking about things How that help. Over oh, I'll tell you what helps me. Just waiting another day, sleeping it off again, and then waking up two days later and my hangover's <laughs> usually gone. Well, is that what you wanted? Okay, Vegemite. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. I haven't, I haven't patted all in the morning to stop my headache. Yeah. Okay, yeah. continue. So you uh, sweated it out. You sweated it out, which I did Sunday morning at Fistball. Yeah, gotcha. uh, we started at 8.30 in the morning. I got there at 9, like a, like a legend. Yeah. And Fashionably light. We were dripping in sweat by 9.15. It was disgusting. It was yeah. so hot. I, it was as disgusting as your performance. Like, I, I, I find I put that very low in my book. Like, <laughs> Getting there and, half an hour late. But, but, so, Hamish, you will appreciate this. Like, mm-hmm. if you are late, not having the attitude around, like, oh, so what? I'm late. Like, yeah, I'm no, late. no, you're very yeah. apologetic. I'm really sorry, guys. Like, it was a bit of a front foot, which, are, which, so most of the time, a front foot works in most scenarios, but not, not in, that in that one. one. Yeah. And I didn't appreciate it. What and were you doing Saturday night, Dan? Uh, I was at a friend's just, just 40th, about town. 40th birthday at the Woodvale Tavern yeah, uh, Function yeah, Centre. Yeah, exactly. uh, it was very good. So we had our, had Shout our, out Ryan Stubbs, his birthday day before okay, mine. Stubbs, it was a joint birthday party. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Right. No, one, no one knows, cares. <laughs> Adam, Adam and Thorpe. Ryan doesn't listen to this. <laughs> it was Adam Thorpe. Thorpe, Thorpe he wasn't there. <laughs> we had our first uh, training session for Fistball, and yes. it was fucking fabulous. You weren't yeah, there, no, but you had a good reason. Thank you. Can you see my bruising? I actually can. Holy shit. I got bruising. Um... Monica, our Swiss fister. The captain coach. She is phenomenal. Yeah, she's very good. She ran training like wow. you know, I'm talking John Worsfold, bought into Alistair Clarkson, Clarks and bought into John Longmire. Like shit. Was ruthless. I fucking love it. So she had she had a magnets, she had tactics, she had positional plays, she had breakdown drills, we had proper warm ups, we had bendy weirdy things we were doing in the warm up. We were it was incredible. We played three sets and I was cooked. So not only is this a fantastic sport. Yeah. Um, it is fucking fun. So by the time we were into the third set, it was uh, probably getting close to 10.30 and it was real bloody hot. This is on Sunday oh, morning. Oh, yeah, stinking hot. And I was entering moderate stages of heat stroke and um, <laughs> going down yep. a little bit. Uh, Monica just, just absolutely stepped up, took us to a place we needed to be. It was great, great sort of first training session. I went home that day, heat stroke and all, and I went and watched some fistball. I watched some of the Australian team stuff. Mm-hmm. I watched some of the nationals from a couple of years ago. I reckon we're pretty good. Wow. In we're fact, pretty good? You said this to me with a pretty straight face before. I look. You think we're pretty good, and we're not. We're not. And remember, like this tournament, we're not going up against the national team. We're going up against other state oh, no, teams. I'm not so going to start. I'm not going to come in, Ari. I'm, uh, we're not. Yeah, gonna have don't go the early crow. But characteristic isn't going to be arrogance, but we're going to fucking win the national. We'll be confident. <laughs> yeah. We're going in confidence. <laughs> we could be going to New Zealand in February. So, what's too. the? Um, do we know what other states have entered? South Australia, Victoria, times two, New South Wales, I believe. Isn't there a Tassie team? Don't think so. Okay. okay. One day. 
So, look, we're building from the bottom up. We have never had West Australian representation. If you would like to sponsor the Western Fisters, yeah, uh, huge. our uniforms will be dropping shortly. Thanks uh, to ID Athletic. Some, we do have some... Thank you very much, ID Athletic. Western Fisters brought to you by ID Athletic. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a couple of player sponsors available, so please get in touch. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. Hello at backchatstudios.com.au. Uh, just get in touch. We've got packages available. You want to come on the journey with us? You want to jump on the jacket with us? Yep. You want to sponsor a player? Ham- Hamish is playing. Yep. Sponsorless currently. Yeah. Wow, sponsorless. Will's playing. Sponsorless currently. Shit. Dan's putting his hand up to be in the squad. Yep. It was very was quite good. How would you how would you rate there was actually oh, I'm still learning the game, but I I've got the competitiveness and like I can run around and, yep. and get amongst it. That's what I love about the sport. You don't have to be that good. You to just got to run around and get amongst it. I was it. vocal. I was like, yeah. you were you were throwing shade at me all game and I was coming back no, at I you. I was angry at yeah. you a lot to your own fist ball team. Yeah, still am, right. actually. If I could put my hand up and say that. That's right. Yeah. Hey, the that's bigger right. man will get over it, but that's right. <laughs> oh, I'm, that's, I'm fine. Dad's already over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How yeah. was your weekend, Hammer? Fucking massive. I want to hear all about it. It was enormous. Um, As fun a weekend as I've had in a long, long time. Started off, so my whole family arrived last week, uh, around about Saturday uh, last week. My uncle, James, got married on Friday night. Right. Well done, James. Well, well done, James. Uh, he got married at the Cottesloe Civic yeah. Centre. Wow. Beautiful location. What? Wow. Can beautiful. I ask why Why do you get married in WA? Uh, well, he was he's, he's born here. Oh, right. Um, he, his wife, Lisa, is not born here, but loves it in WA. Right. Uh, I got a really nice day, 32, 33 degrees. Overlooking Cottesloe Beach, sensational spot, the Civic Centre, if you haven't been there. Uh, got married, that was lovely, back to the Shaw House and just got That's completely obliterated from then. Um, that finished up the and then, like, just torched completely. Anyway, got up in the morning and was, obviously, unlike Indy, I was nursing a bit of a hangover. Uh, I was feeling a bit slim and so were the other boys, Slim Dusty. Got up. We had a couple of beers and then went on the boat at... Uh, we went on a boat to Rottnest at about 1.45. Got over to Rottnest at... Quite specific. That was, yeah, it was meant to leave at 1.30, but someone was late, which was disappointing. <laughs> anyway, we got over to Rottnest and it's perched up at the uh, Sam Fire, <laughs> whatever the place is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I didn't leave that table for five and a half hours. And I, again, like just sitting there and just playing drinking games with my cousins and my brothers. And it was just shit loads of fun. Wow. Got back on the boat still drinking and people were just rocking on the boat on the way back. It was tough. Saw a woman walking up the stairs, look at <laughs> got up the stairs. I can't remember who this woman's name was. Looked at the person sitting in front of me to the left and just went, all of a sudden she just dropped completely white and then just hit the deck. Got wow. up. Someone, it was, that was fine. But like just the shock of the waves. Just, just quick fainting. Quickly fainted. Fine. Anyway, <laughs> got back, CBH, had a few more beers. Uh, that was great fun. Went to bed at, Reasonable hour, midnight or something, and then up early morning the next morning for the uh, start of the Brayshaw Golf Challenge. I want to hear about the Brayshaw so Golf Challenge. And that was a Sunday that morning. That was the right? Saturday night. This is right. now Sunday morning. Woke up for the Brayshaw Golf Challenge. Uh, which you were, So you weren't at fistball training at all? I couldn't come to fistball right. training. No, okay. I had the No, it's good. I mean, yeah. no, it would be nice what, to, yeah. What time did golf start? Golf didn't start till midday, but what? I had family, oh, okay. sell, I had family no, things cool. in the morning. No, no, that's all good. My yep. family doesn't live here. I only see them once a year. Yeah, as no, a whole that's fine. Anyway. Yep. Could have brought them down to fistball training. Yeah, you could have been there. That's right. Sorry. I I already Regardless. No, it's all good. It is all good. Now, I being half an hour late, I guess that's pretty bad. Not rocking up at all, that's completely acceptable. I mean... Totally. Yeah, yeah but if you yeah, own up to it and apologise and... Fa- family does Family does live interstate and, mm. and he gave... He, he I gave, have family in Greece. No, but he... he <laughs> he's got a point. International. Hey, he's got a point. Hey, but what I hear? We're just spinning facts. What I hear? Yeah. I could have gone to see them though, but I couldn't because I had fistball training. Right. But uh, you didn't Dan get just notice. knocked back the flight to Greece. So Hammer said during the week he couldn't make it. Well, you I just said decided- during the week I'd be there at nine. No, you did not. 100%. You t- I will read your text message out where you said, I'm going in all nighter and I'm coming 8.30. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> anyway, right, anyway sorry. Training. You, so you're having fun golfing while we're fistball training? Fun golfing. Yep. So the way that, that I couldn't go to this, this is the second year that it's been around the Brayshaw Golf Challenge. Couldn't go last year because I had AFLW commitments. Uh, now I've been fired. I am no longer there. <laughs> so I had full capacity to go and be a part of it. And the way it worked was my dad, my two of my brothers, Angus couldn't be there, uh, Will and Andrew and myself, you bring four, the three teammates. So you've got a four ball each and it's across two days. So I had my team, Team Moose, uh, and the first day was out at Joondalup. 
th- uh, 18 holes, the format, I'm not going to bore you with the... No, ins- please don't go into too much detail. ...ins and outs of the details, inside. but we got to the Played end of day tough. one and <laughs> our team was leading by six shots to Andrew's team who were leading to the next team, Will's team by one more shot, and then Dad Dad's team was out of it. They were shit. Anyway, that night we went to a place called Lapa Brazilian Barbecue. In Subi. Yeah. In Subi. Uh, Sensational. Yeah, yeah. Almost died last time I went to this place. Well, I, I think I was with you. I, I feel nearly, like I was with you. I very nearly died last time. You got time. a fucking flag where it's like red light, yeah, green you light. Yeah, you get your coaster, red, green, and if it's green, they just pump food out. I remember Not food, it's just meat. It's just, well, no, 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 it's food. <laughs> because they, but you can knock back the other stuff. They bring out pasta and they've got bread yeah. and it's rice and no thanks. Anyway. I have been there a few times before and the pace of play is usually pretty consistent. It's You can get by. I have done close to the two hours on green because it's just, if it's a busy restaurant, they can't get to you every five seconds. It was not busy this night. Are you having beers at the time? Uh, no, we're having uh, Brazilian mojitos, wow. which are just a few shots of rum with sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And it was fucking delicious. We're drinking that, the red wine, white wine's out there. We're having meat. And the meat starts, and I said to the people sitting next to me, I'm going to see how long I can go without declining a single piece of meat. Right. So that's my challenge to myself. Just a regular weekend for you? Regular weekend. Got 40, <laughs> how yeah. much meat can you get How much mouth? meat can you fit <laughs> in your mouth? I got 40, uh, 40 minutes in and I thought I was going to die. I said <laughs> yes to chicken hearts three times, chicken. which were fucking disgusting. <laughs> but everything else, the sweet chili chicken was beautiful. Yeah. The garlic the lamb, beef, rosemary beef. Oh, it was just sensational I stuff. Rolling out but. Because it wasn't busy, the pace of play was at a rapid a rate of knots. Yes. Like I'm talking every, I couldn't even get, I'm swallowing one and there's something else coming out. I'm talking every 30 seconds to two minutes, <laughs> that's your bracket. You have 30 seconds or two minutes, something else is hitting your plate. Yes. Phenomenal pace. Is this beer? No, nah, mojitos coming down, bang, 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 not too bad, mate, itself. Uh, we put, we're, as a communal table, we said, let's go red for a bit because everyone's going to die. We sat red for about another 40 minutes. That's just responsible. 40 on, 40 off, flipped it for the last little bit, got about 20 more minutes in, had a couple and then flipped it red. After we'd finished it all, we're still sipping these mojitos, having things. Anyway, the guy who we were there with, uh, one of dad's teammates, owns the restaurant. Great result for everyone involved. Is he Brazilian? No, he's not Brazilian. Okay. Said to the bloke out the back, we'll have tequilas. We're having shots of tequila. Uh, that, anyway That sounds like it's going to end So the first shot of tequila came out No worries Lick your hand Salt Bang tequila Beautiful Oh we've got two of them Let's try the next one Different shot of tequila came out Beautiful Knock it that taste back any different? Still tequila, Tastes different mate. but tequila yep. <laughs> Sam Sturt was sitting to my left for Our place for Fremantle Hated every second of the tequila Finished the second one And like you could see him nearly vomiting He hated it that much <laughs> Anyway Sack who's one of dads Who's the owner of this place Dad's mate um, Sack McAuliffe uh, said, uh, boys, who do we like? What like do we like? out of Happy Gilmore. What do we think? What do we like better? The first or the second one? We're going to get another round. I saw Sam Stewart about to say first. We all yelled out, everyone loves the second one. Another round of the second one came out, knocked that back. Anyway, we ended up doing about nine shots of tequila Jeepers. in about 30 minutes. Going back to no, Sax. Didn't. We did. Going back to Sax House, watching the cricket and just sitting there and watching one of the great performances, mind you. Hence why I've got my Travis Head shirt. Uh, and waking up at, at for a tea time at eight o'clock this morning. Oof, tough. Uh, so you played this morning. Played this morning on the second round of the golf day. Again, not going to bore you with the details How of the day. Shit house, <laughs> fucking horrendous. How are you feeling now? Oh, I'm feeling much better now, but I was horrendous at the day. The finish of this golf day, I text you guys. It mm-hmm. was the great one of the greatest sporting individual achievements or performances. So last I've ever week seen. on the show, we spoke to Gary. Mc, yep, Mc Glenn? face. Glenn. Uh, Gareth Morgan. Gareth Malloy. <laughs> Gareth Morgan. <laughs> Gareth Malloy. Gareth Morgan. And Gold he Coast took third. six for six. Six for nothing in six balls to win his team. Captain yep. of the side to win his team the yep. game. Described rightly so as the, the greatest sport such, yeah, individual sporting thing I've ever ever even heard of. Greatest sporting achievement in Australian history. Yeah. Which I agree with. Yeah. yeah. You have texted today yep. and said, you know, Gareth Malloy. <laughs> Gareth Morgan. <laughs> Gareth Malloy, what he did last week. It's just been trumped. I didn't say it's just been trumped. I said it's in like it's in Gareth Morgan areas. This okay. thing. So hit us. So this, way, is, this, this is, is the, the second round of golf. Second round of golf after, after the first round. What can round only be described as, as a, a weekend of fucking debauchery. Yeah, it's a ball terror of a weekend. Massive night. Everyone's dusty. It's not even a weekend. You've had a week on the beers. <clears throat> yeah, we have. Anyway, it comes down to the last. So because my team was first, we were coming home at the end. So everyone finishes and we're the last team coming up. Right. The way the last two holes were formatted, 
was that everyone multiplies their scores together, so you can get a big, you can get a massive last score. But if one is that person, a good thing. Or a bad good thing. thing? Okay. But if one person has a zero, zero times anything is zero, so everyone wipes it. So how, sorry, I need to know now. Like, how's the scoring work? Like, it's we're playing thought, Stableford, but I'll just I'll explain it to you. If you get two points, one point zero points is bad. One point is not great. Two is what you're meant to get. Anything above two is like you're playing well. Okay. Okay. So let's just. So I, you want a high score. You want a high score in this format. That, that, does that ruin everything <clears throat> you ever thought about yeah, golf? But no. I assume but, you get no, two I'm points you, for Hamish, certain. You, I assume you get two points for doing a good thing. Two points for a par, a net par. It's an inter- anyway. If you don't understand golf, but let no, me. No, it's just not everyone's a golfer listening yeah, to this thing. I'm not certainly know, know what the fuck you're talking. <clears> you'll, about. you'll appreciate this regardless. Oh, I want to appreciate. So Andrew's team was the second. They were coming second. Mm. Okay. They were the team in front of us. What mm. happened was on the 18th green, there's a big lake just before the green. Okay. So Andrew's team before us. Andrew has hit a ball. It's hit the rock face of this lake and bounced back in. And he has said, the ruling is you have to drop it at the closest point of entry, which is all the way back behind the lake. He wasn't sure about that. His team wasn't sure. So he dropped it right next to where it went in, like the rock face, finished the hole, had six for one point. So he only got one point. So the rest of their multiplication came through. They got one point. Uh, Their whole team. No, Andrew got one point, which meant they got about four points for their team. Okay. Yep. We then finished. We wiped. We had zero. So we had absolutely nothing, but we had the low handicapper. So we had the best player on our team across all 16 players. This is where it gets good. (laughs) So we get to the green, and we get to the green, and everyone's debating, oh, what was the ruling on Andrew? Okay, we'll ask Wade. Wade, what's what do you have to do in this situation? Who's Wade? He, my teammate, the, the best golfer. The best golfer. Oh, the sure, 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 they yeah. said, Andrew, what do, you, what do we have to do here, Wade? <laughs> Wade said, Andrew, you've got to go all the way back behind the green. Right. Oh, okay, whatever. And they were like, oh, should we do it? Andrew had to go back to 106 meters from the pin. And at, at this stage, have you won the day? We had already won the day, except for this ruling. That what Andrew had to do was go back to 106 metres over a lake and hit the ball in the hole to win the whole tournament. Right, so so you've allowed this because... It we've sound, allowed it because it, sounds, it was the rules. Right. It's the rules. So yep. we have just said, ah, oh, well, we've lost any... We've already won this thing, so we've just wiped the hole. We're like, whatever. We're already winning. Andrew has to hit the ball from 106 metres and knock it in the hole for their team to win. We're all thinking, yep, sweet. We've already won it. We've shook hands. We're thinking about where we're going to play it next year. Andrew drives back in with his team behind the lake. 106 metres away, throws his ball down for three points, which would have won them the game, hit this ball, one, two, three, rolled in the hole. No. Eruption. <laughs> Every All 12 players are watching. His group is just hugging each other. I thought he was going to jump into the lake. Has taken the ball 106 metres away, basically hitting a hole in one on a small par three and won the tournament after a two-day event. Pissed as you as, as you like, <laughs> and you film this. Did we you drop to your knees? It. You didn't film <laughs> it. Oh my god! Where, where were you at this stage? I was picking my ball up, having thinking we were already winning. Were you watching him have the yes, shot? Yes, I was watching him have the shot. Fuck, my, were you thinking, bro? My phone was in my bag. He's basically hit a hole in one from 106 meters to win the tournament. People were dead screaming. It was fucked. Everyone pandemonium. was just pandemonium, jumping up and down, cracking beers, pouring them on it. It was phenomenal. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. To win the whole fucking thing, I, oh, he's holding up, sweating. He got, uh, he gets us all the balls with the celebratory thing. He gets to pick where we do it next year, and he gets the glory to have the greatest golf shot that's ever been hit by a Brayshaw ever. To well, do it on a family golf day, knowing yep. your family. <clears throat> the very last shot of the extent. day. Wow, he'll, he'll be reminding you will, of you. Reminding that forever. Ever. That, that you will never not talk about that. There never. will not be a family get together that, that will never where he yeah. either he gloats about it, yep. but he doesn't even have to, no. does he? Yeah. No. He, he just sits there and he yep. knows you know. We're going to talk about it. Dad Dad's going to talk about he knows it. Your brother knows. Angus knows. Angus wasn't even there. He yeah, and he'll his, be yeah. fucking spewing. He right said up. his his reply was. I've, that is going to go down in folklore for 50 years. This will still be spoken about, and I fucking wasn't there. Wow. <laughs> I remember when I just didn't go. Oh. Wow, incredible! Well, I'm sweating. I mean, I don't know what was longer than the story <laughs> or the journey you've had over the weekend, but I'm glad we're here for it. Dan's had enough. Fist ball, ladies and gentlemen. Last week we spoke to a man that we could only refer to as the French fister Pierre. Uh, he was our number one ranked uh, fister across the weekend. Um, our invitational. We spoke to Pierre and he he told us, Ham, I don't know if you saw our social content go out, mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings style. Mm. Did you like it? Fucking hilarious. Right in the air. It's actually about it. I reckon it could be the best piece of social media material we've put out in two years. Mm. Incredible scenes. Mm. Frodo Baggins, uh, mm-hmm. the, the meeting of the greats and says he'll take the ring. Uh, the big guy with the beard says he can have his axe. 
uh, Agal, Agalal. Gimli. <laughs> yeah, who's uh, Ang- Angathor? <laughs> Angathor. What's the guy with the Gimli says, uh, I think Boromir says, you can have my sword. Legolas says, you can have my bow. Gimli says, you can have my axe. And Pierre said, you can have, you my, can have my, my fist. fist. Right, so... That's who he spoke to last week. The Pierre, look, we have a squad and we are picking it, but it's pretty sad to say Pierre's made it into the team. We I'm told not, him last week. Yeah, we told him. <laughs> I was going to be a little bit of an intrigue. But we thought, you know what? That was great chatting to Pierre last week. We'd love to speak to another member of the Western Fisters, and we are joined on the show by the great man himself, as I delay any further, with any further ado, as Dan Con sits down and puts his headphones back into his ear. Happy birthday, Dan. Jackson Bowen. Hello, Jacko. How are you, mate? Hello, fellow sisters. Doing pretty well. Thank you very much. Now, Hamish, Dan. Um, Hello, mate. Dan was late, Jackson, as you know, because you were on time. Mm-hmm. Hamish. I wasn't there. Was an apologetic uh, missing in action. But how did you find your first training section, Jacko, uh, down at the Western Fisters on Sunday morning? Um, pretty heavy, to be honest. <laughs> I was kind of rolling up thinking we were going to knock a ball around but Monica put us to work pretty early um, and then yeah the great man Dan decided to rock up about halfway through with his sunnies on hung over as hell <laughs> so uh, no it was good it was good fun we had yeah good fun there confirm or deny heat stroke um, did, did you feel like you were suffering the effects of that oh mate I've had the bloody aloe vera on me all night I was like <laughs> all over the neck <laughs> do you have bruises yeah, but- on your do you have bruises on your forearms as well Jacko uh, the calluses are starting to form, I reckon, though, mate. But, um, calluses? Yeah, on the pretty sore um, last respect. night. Um, Jacko, how did you feel Dan performed uh, throughout the day? Training? Oh, I know, oh, he's back. How did you feel Dan performed? We're just sort of, I guess, credentialing some of our uh, own sorts of playing styles. Well, so Dan and I were on the same team mm. to start. Um, look, there was a fair few unforced errors, mm. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, which may have let us down. But when he was on, he was on. Yeah. Um, and then he decided to pull himself off for the quad. It's pretty weird. Yeah, yeah. he's done a quad. Um, yeah, and then himself himself off. And we just leaked the boys up. Yes, just decided to pull himself off on court. While he's um, fisting. While he's fisting. Now, uh, Jacko, what position were you playing? Whereabouts were you positioned? Did you go and mix it up a little bit under nines football style, forward, mid, back, play a different quarter, or did you just lock into one position? So, well, look, a lot of the other boys there, are quite tall and can hit the ball pretty hard. I immediately went for the kind of Cam Setter kind of role. Um, started there well, but then went back to your territory, Hammer, from the um, tryouts and right down back deep, um, getting those ones up, and they seem to work for me. So either spot will work, I think, but um, right up against the net, too short, mate. How, how, how long as your... Like, can you talk to us about your fisting journey? Like, how long have you been fisting for? Oh, virgin fister as of the um, tryout, but you know, like, I'm a quick learner. I think. Yeah. How how do you uh, assess like your fisting? How has you, is your fisting improving? In solid fists. I I've impressed myself to be honest. My mm. fisting's been extraordinary. Mm. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now nah, putting some work in, put the effort in in the weights room. You know, getting those like curls going with a couple of two kilo dumbbells. Um, yeah. Good. I reckon Jackson was a bit of a utility on there. Yeah. You go down the back pocket and he could hit it but, um, forward pretty high, but he could also go up to the net and cause a bit of damage. Well, I mean, Jacko um, joined me at the paddo afterwards as we were literally like bathing in ice, like genuinely <laughs> yeah. sunstroked. Like it was, yeah. it was, it was, yeah. I was in poor condition, but I thought, well, what better way to solve that than to head down to the paddo and have a couple of cold beers? Um, AFLW was on, Geelong, mm. Melbourne, and we just started what chatting What a barnstormer game just, that just was. Just an absolute ball tear of a game, but... It was even better because I got to sit next to the great Jacko, whose sister, Michaela Bowen, yes. a superstar across Gee. multiple teams in the AFLW, West Coast. You would have coached I Michaela. Coached, yep, I coached both for two seasons, I believe. So, Jacko, do you have some catching up to do to be the best sports person in the family? Well, look, like Hammer, I've spent a lot of time in the shadows. I've been called Shadow Man at footy a lot, you know, <laughs> living in the back. So hopefully, you know, if I get the chance to represent the state in fist ball, hopefully I can put that right and um, become the shining light for once in my family. How did you, how did you take when I um, 
as the you as the Geelong team, your sister's team, entered the last quarter, um, five goals up, so six goals to one they were, six goals seven to one goal they seven, were up, it in. up by five goals. Yep. And I said, these girls cannot lose this game. It is impossible. <laughs> they have won. Book your flights, get your tickets, Jacko. How did you sort of take that on board? I mean, it was squeaky bum time there at the end, wasn't it? But you really <laughs> set us up for it. I said, as soon as you said it, I said, shut up, mate, shut up. And then they went and kicked two on the trot in about two minutes. Um, but we, we held on, which was good, very good. It was a barnstorming game, mate. Now, back to uh, the comment you made about the shadow. It's, um, it, it, mate, we've all been there, but it's hard to, uh, there no, cat, no shadow can be cast big enough to fit my chassis in. And let me tell you the one thing about Michaela, your sister Sorry, is. Sorry, boys, I lost you. Oh, hello, we're back talking about how big I am. Um, <laughs> the best up. way to break out of the shadow, mate, is to do something remarkable. And I think the biggest remarkable thing we could do as a state is to win a uh, win the national fistball competition, go on, do bigger and better things. Football is a national game. Fistball's international. Mm. So your sister can be a national sports she athlete. National she, champ. she can win the AFLW Premiership this year for all we care, but she's never going to be an international fistballer. He's lost us. <laughs> Jacko. <laughs> I've given you one of the great inspirational speeches, Jacko. All right. Well, we're going to leave right. you with that, Jacko. <clears throat> you go and think about that, mate. You go and think yeah, about the think silence. About you that real hard, mate. <laughs> Uh, wow. Jacko, we'll see you next Sunday at training. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to you, Jacko, before you get back. Now, goodbye, Jackson. Bye-bye, mate. Now, Can't hear now, I will say, talking about international fisting, yes. we've had an approach by a country. They've invited us to an, to an international tournament, and I'm not fucking joking. And I thought I, I thought I thought I was getting scammed. <laughs> the captain of the Namibian fistball, no. fistball team. No. The, the captain. The Namibians. Rico has hit us up. Fuck. He yes. sent an email and then he's hit us on socials. And did, I thought, he ask, did he ask? Bank details. Did he send some bank details? Yes. He's long to lost free the, the prince. cousin of the prince. <laughs> no, he's Fuck, a jit. Rico. Uh, so there is a tournament in October next year, and we're, and the back chat, aka the Western Fist, is brought to you by ID Athletic, have been involved and been invited to compete in Namibia. Fuck. So, so I will see you in Namibia. Gee whiz. I, lo- I love that you sent the screenshot through to the, we've got a, like an Instagram group chat with some of the fist ballers around the, yeah, the, the country. And a couple of them were like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's legit. That's Rico, captain. Um, there's another tournament. I think we got invited to something else like in 2020. Yeah. 2025, there's like another thing as well. There's a, there's a bit going on. Fist ball's a big deal. We're going to Namibia. We're going to anyway, Namibia. that's Jackson Bowen. He's a star. He'll be a part of the Western Fisters. If you do want to get involved, ID Athletic bringing you that, but there is some sponsorship spots available, as I mentioned. And we've got the, the uniforms coming oh. out very soon. They look so Shit, bloody yeah. good. I haven't seen them. Looking forward okay, Hammer, a little... Sort of spanner in the works came up through the week with the uniforms. We sent the um, the design through to mm. to Monica, who obviously she yep. knows what she's talking about. Of course, and she said, it "Looks great. Just a little um, thing for you to know that fistballs traditionally played with long sleeves. So if that's okay, I'm going to be wearing a long sleeve underneath no. our short sleeve." Monica actually said, "I will require a long sleeve. Yeah. You can do whatever you like <laughs> yeah. with your own, but I'll be playing in a long. I'll sleeve. I'll be playing in long sleeve. <laughs> wow. So now we changed it. We're wearing long sleeves Fuck because that's yeah. what that's we've got true. to do." And they Wouldn't look amazing. Just, okay, so it doesn't slip off the fabric? That's, so I'm gonna that, be, yeah, I don't I, know about that. I will that. tell you right now, I'll, I'll be rolling my sleeves up and, and I'll be, I'll be, yeah, taking, it. I'll be like taking it on the, on the I, skin. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm more, I'm more of a raw fister. Because the feel and the grip mm. that you get on your skin, I don't know how that works. What have you, have a lot you, of the fisting you do is actually on your forearm. Forearm. Yeah. you gotta get, you, you got to get, get a the deep fist. The fist's got to be quite deep. Mm. Like halfway up your forearm type areas, <laughs> yeah. so that's it's checking Dan, if a cow's pregnant areas. Dan Jesus, is Dan. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Christ Almighty, Dan. It's just na- it's just nature. It's what they do. Yeah, happy birthday. Who does the the cow people? I don't know. Um, the farmers. The <laughs> that's what they call cow people. <laughs> I'm bruised. Wow. Well, yeah, okay. I'm bruised too. Uh, let's keep moving. Mm. We're, we're talking a lot of shit today. Yeah, apologies. Uh, my phone has just decided to dial me when we, when we did that face. Oh, we went to the NBL. That's the other, last thing. You don't thing. have a run in front of you? No, I do now. The NBL, oh. Hammer. We went there, right? Yeah, how we was it? We sat courtside. Yep. And there was, you know, there was some high flyers roaming around the court. Mm. You know, Oscar Allen walks in. Yes. Does he? Wow. Crips walks yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, Govan's floating up the back. Gov's there. Duggan's there. They're better seats than that. They're out the back, are they? Yeah. <laughs> they were, I had to get they, binoculars out they, to see them. They were probably in the best sponsor box you'd get in. There was one of the big yeah, sort yeah, of eight yeah, seaters. Yeah. Got for, we were in front of them. Cool. We, were, we were on the court. Awesome. We, we were next to the scorer on one side and the bench was sitting on the bench. Like <laughs> the, it, it, went, it went Wildcat, 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 Dan, Dan Scoey, <laughs> Jaden, Nick. Scorer. Uh, 
scorer was on the right. The the LED light operators were on our left. I do athletic. Yeah. I do athletic. I'm not sure what he's doing there. <laughs> he, was like, up. he was he is a man of many tasks. Uh I, I've never, I haven't been to the basketball in five years. I was pissing myself laughing because I knew nothing about what was going on. Yeah, it was a good spot, very good spot to see. I, I mean, I've sat there many times. Quick um, little shout out. I mean, quick, give a quick little shout out to a friend, a friend Amanda. Oh, I mean, you have the run sheet in front. We've of got you. to give a shout. Well, I no, I wasn't even, I didn't even witness this. I, I you know, told me about I it later. I her name, and I was hoping that on the run sheet, you Nick, ha- Nick's got um. Have we got the video of this, Nick? Yeah, we absolutely do. There we go. Let's let's have a little look here. I haven't seen this. <laughs> what is this? This is old. Fucking mate. Looks like, like John have Daly. Just have a look at you. Have a look. You would have seen, seen a couple of beers. And, yeah. You know how I'd pour a beer. Have a look at this one. Who's stuck his cups? Have a good one. Um, oh, that's the French way. It's a clan, isn't it? <laughs> What's in your ear there? You <laughs> piece. <laughs> What's listening to? The commentary. <laughs> What's in there? It lives there. Sort of thing. What's playing in it? Nothing. Is that like a Bluetooth headset? Yep. I drive all the time. Right. I've already got. I've been done. Just fucked over there. It's there, and I don't even know. It's fucking there after. I'm not sure there. This bloke is at the bar, rolling around. <laughs> good. With a blue. Looks, looks good. Bluetooth, Bluetooth ear. Earpiece in. But Amanda behind the bar at the NBL. We're just quietly just having a couple of quiet uh, sherbets, a couple of shelters, uh, a couple of whippersnappers. And Amanda, big fan of the podcast, said we'd, we'd say hello to her. Say hello, Amanda. She was serving behind the bar. Oh, shout out, Amanda. She was like, back chat. Get to the front. Everyone get out of the Everyone way. Piss off. Priority serving happening right now. Say hello, Amanda. I don't really like basketball as a sport. Just gonna put it. Neither do I. It, it, was, it was pretty. It was honestly the best part was having beers, talking shit, yeah. and, and watching the game was getting the on the court stuff. at the end and shooting around. That was. That <laughs> they let us on the court as soon as the siren went. <laughs> Dan was on the court sinking three. <laughs> Seriously, all the loftus shoot arounds have been paying off. Well, I went out. I sp- Oscar Allen said he was couple. watching me lay bricks, and I yeah. said I can't wait to. Hurl abuse at you couple. from the sideline. Missed a couple. Uh, yeah, I, mi- I did miss a couple. Um, Warwick Kappa is apparently in business uh, mm. doing it's, something, and yeah. I have no idea what this is about. Mm. So, do Warwick, you want to tow us into this? Because I don't know. I'll give you a quick tow in. Um, Warwick, you know, yeah, like, we all I know who Warwick as, is. as the as the <coughs> king of you know probably the AFL at, at stages of his. his mm-hmm. Certainly, as he would say, he he hasn't played AFL for a little while, but a he's been time. an entrepreneur across multiple facets of business, and he's Pretty recently sure he porn at one point. Re- didn't he? Well. Funny you mentioned porn because he's re into the business. Is uh, look, what I can only describe is one of the great TV interviews of all time. And if we get um, demonetized or copyrighted because of this, I don't care because I think you boys need to see Go what Warwick Cap is doing with his life right now. This was last week. Okay. Yeah. Footy legend Warwick Kappa is embarking on a controversial career change. He's taking charge of a brothel in Melbourne's South East. The first of what he predicts will become part of a nationwide empire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Footy's ultimate high flyer, the newest recruit into the world's oldest profession. Warwick Kappa revealing he's now the owner of Westminster Secrets, a brothel based in Oakley. The secret's out. Warwick's back in town for all your needs. The establishment is just around the corner from Kappa's childhood home and footy ground. He said it took six months to arrange his licence and a six-figure sum to renovate the building. And we spent a couple of grand on the place. It looks brand new now. Brothel owner is the latest career move for the colourful what? footy figure. On the Gold Coast, Kappa was a metre mate and later ran unsuccessfully for mayor. State politics was in his sights too before he missed the registration deadline. The high flyer was also a lollipop man, owned a mobile coffee van, aptly named Cappuccino, and That's appeared good. on Celebrity Big Brother. If Warwick has his way, he'll be taking his brothel empire national and he's already scouting for new locations. So Melbourne, Sydney, that's the plan. Anywhere else? Yeah, probably national. I'm big in Tassie, Adelaide, city of churches. He likens his business model to that of successful fast food chains. A bit like McDonald's. Let's have a Big Mac, one more lot. Tell them Wizard Kappa Centre with a new tee and tight shorts. Kappa says he'll be on site at the oh brothel once or twice a month holding a barbecue for clients. <laughs> Ainsley Cox, <laughs> 7 News.
<laughs> so, what on so, earth? So Warwick's opened a nationwide <laughs> chain of brothels, brothels. and his, his biggest marketing ploy is Warwick will be down there once, once or twice, twice a month having a barbecue. <laughs> oh, honestly, I don't oh, understand. I'd be happy to go down to the brothel just for a barbecue, mate. Imagine rolling down and grabbing a snag, grabbing with a snag with Warwick, Kappa, and then just rolling home. Fuck what that services required. I don't understand why they thought it'd be good to basically do an advertisement for his new business. Well, that's what I mean. That's and what the news story is. But yeah. the reporter, like, and, and no, no disrespect, I certainly no disrespect, Nate, but it was so down, like, it, there was yeah. no tongue in cheek. No. You know? And Warwick was very serious. Oh, I just thought that is fucking brilliant. Kappa. Okay, let's chuck a couple of hundred grand into it. You know, absolutely. We're going nationwide, just like McDonald's. Tell them what a Kappa said. Yeah. <laughs> they are uh, touch shorts and they are white teeth. <laughs> He's loose. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just thought I'd oh, like to share that. I, I hadn't. Josh, like that? that was very, very funny. Josh Dacos um, <laughs> making oh, some headlines uh, over the weekend and today um, has gone out, gone out on the um, on uh, you know for one of those off season trips and he's head out to spend some time with Ange Postacoglu at the Top, Tottenham. Tottenham yeah, Hotspurs. Oh, they're doing well. Good, good time to jump on the bandwagon. Anyways, he spent some time with the club and point. he's come back uh, with some opinions. So. The biggest part of this story is that Josh didn't do the story with Nick. I'm very surprised. <laughs> yeah, that was big. Josh I, I, yeah, Nick was you, over in Nick was in New York with Bailey Smith. So, so Josh has come out and said basically that he's flabbergasted by the, the disparity and the difference in pay between AFL players and EPL players and how much EPL teams are looked after by their teams. Um, which, with context, he's done it at I think a cashy at the races <coughs> in front of a live audience. So sure. he's probably gone in there, going, "Well, Nick's not here. Yep. Dad's not here. Say something controversial. I need to fucking add some value because yeah. I, <laughs> I, I like, I, yeah, maybe I, yeah, I did win a best and fairest in a premiership year. I'm a premiership player clearly, mm. but I don't have my two wingmen. I'm mm. gonna fuck something up here. So he's basically it's like come having out. a trident without the uh, other two prongs. <laughs> it's just a spear. Which is just it's a, a sword. Spear. Yeah, it's a spear or a long. <laughs> Point. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a skewer. It's a spork. <laughs> it's a skewer. Is it a spork? Oh, I wouldn't have thought that. Well, it's, it's, like it's got fork. a curvy, yeah, it's curvy like, prongs. Okay, so it's like a, a shovel. It's like a shovel and a trident. But sp- spork has the prong still. Yes, yeah, 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 spork has the prongs. I like okay, to come apologize. On, anyway, he's come out and said that. Um, yes, Josh, there is a disparity in the difference in earnings because the APL is 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 owned by. Uh, well, they're owned by Middle Eastern countries, effectively. Oil Shakes, tycoons. Yeah, shakes in those countries own these teams. They are billion-dollar empires. And the rest. The Gold Coast Suns is basically <laughs> propped up by the AFL uh, on a regular basis. They may have 3,000 people coming to games. The, bloke, the blokes who own those EPL teams could buy the AFL for a laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they yeah. could buy Just it for a laugh. Piss it in. If and they wanted to, they could buy it and say everyone has to play with blindfolds on. They could say, they just make change the game. rules. Hunger it's the Hunger Games. Everyone hunger plays, games. and if you die, you don't yeah, get if you lose, If your team loses, you're dead. They could do that just for a laugh. <laughs> so that would be significant disparity in living yeah. ability if they did do that. Yeah. I saw a, a number today that said the EPL's na- uh, yearly TV deal is $6 billion, which is... Yeah. Seven years of the yeah. AFL's so, TV deal. So like, don't be too flat, Josh, because you're literally <laughs> nothing like the AFL, uh, yeah, the yeah. EPL. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. one of the teams turns heaters on in the ground to warm the grass up, so the snow goes away. Forty days a year, it, take, it costs uh, two hundred grand a day to turn this on, right? And they turn it off for forty days in a row. It's like burning money, basically. Like, literally like burning grass. <laughs> exactly right. And so Josh is down there. He's got the boots started down at Collingwood. Premiership player, best and fairest yeah. player. Not happy with the disparity. I thought it was funny. Josh isn't happy with that. Mason Cox isn't happy with having to play uh, away from the MCG on round. What are we calling it? Round opening round zero. Ground zero. Round what zero. A fucking ground joke zero would be good. See, that would be clever. <laughs> Do you not like it? Fucking stupid. Why? Because like, we'll just call it round one. I don't mind the yeah, idea yes, of correct. it. The idea of it's good. Yeah. Grow the game in Queensland. It'll never grow there because everyone up there hates it. But call it round one. It's the it's the first round. Don't call it opening round. Exactly right. Just call it, call it round one. Why have they not done? I, I haven't seen something that's actually told me why that. The only thing I would say that is because you don't want to break the tradition of Richmond calling a uh, Richmond Carlton round one. <laughs> Coxie's right. had a bit of a hell. I know it was. I know it was tongue in cheek. You know, I, I respect people coming out and saying what they think, which is which is kind of funny. But it, he was, I think, disappointed that okay, we won the flag. Why don't we get a home game against a big big team? Yeah. That's not what happens. That's not what happens. In fact, I actually thought, oh, fuck, like we won in 18. Like, who do we play in 2019? We played away against Brisbane at the Gabba round one in 2019. <laughs> so it's pretty much down to the showground, exactly yeah, the same we're, thing. We're playing opening round. Yeah, correct. So uh, 
what I enjoyed most about this interaction, though, was the CEO of GWS, up GWS, by the way, uh, David Matthews, um, you know, may, may not be connected to, he has come out and absolutely fucking given it to Mason Cox on radio. Have you seen this? No. Nah. So uh, we don't have uh, the live footage of it, but basically Kane Corns, SCN, he loves a bit of controversy. He's got the CEO of the club uh, and said, have you seen Mason Cox's comments around the showgrounds, around the cattle, around the livestock that's happening on your live field? Dave Matthews has gone, uh, you know, he's rolled out a bit of D-grade comedy. That's obviously yeah, what yeah, he's yeah. used to, a bit of that. And then he's finished with... Uh, uh, we our, uh, our team and our fans look forward to meeting Mason in uh, the opening round of the AFL. Um, you know, looking forward to a big rivalry. That's assuming he's playing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bit of a whack. Love we that from Dave Matthews. Assuming he gets selected. Very good. We absolutely love um, it. Just one last thing. I just need to congratulate you, Hammer. Can Thanks, we just get a bit of a, yeah. a round of applause, Hammer? Thanks, mate. Um, you're connected to the, one of the newest uh, winners of the McClellan Trophy. Yep. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, pretty happy, mate. Yep. Fuck is the McClellan? Trophy. The McClellan Trophy is the uh, the AFL one where it's you give the uh, a million bucks to the best female and male team. So Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. have won the McClellan Trophy for two thousand and twenty three. So what's he got to do with it? The angry His brother from Melbourne. Oh right. Just tra- he was just testing to see if I knew what the <laughs> McClellan Trophy was. It's just a million bucks for the best team across both. Why are they the Which best team? Just, they neither of them won a final. Yeah, but it's the most wins. But it's, it's also a stupid thing at the moment because there's only. Like there's only four AFLW or five AFLW teams that are perennially perennially good. Sad dog. It's all right. She's still inside. There's a massive disparity there. But anyway, I'm not Josh Dacos. McClellan Trophy. There you go. Uh, just having a quick look at uh, Twitter while we're hearing from our great friends at Fleet Network. Basically, just to summarise that ad, like if you want to save some money on your car, go see the boys at Fleet Network. No, pretend yourself at least. I don't know. I don't know how we need to summarise that anymore. Just see the photo. <laughs> so they've got the draft party on uh, at Telstra Dome, Doc Lands, whatever the fuck's it called, Marvel Stadium. Harley Reid is in full kit. He's got his jumper on. Well, West Coast jumper. Uh, West Coast number, number nine. nine. Yeah. It, it, everyone else is just that pumping is so around in there good. with normal clothes. <laughs> Harley Reid's got his jumper on. Harley's, I love it. Harley's, it. Harley's ready to play. <laughs> Jump straight in. Ready to play? Wow. Good. You said that we read it. We read it. Read it. If, if, it's, if it's good. And we've got a few this it. time. Wow. Oh, sponsored by... Fuck me. Leadable cameras and Harley Reid. If you it. send it, we Harley read it. Wow. I've had an, I, I'm at, We're done <laughs> We're actually done There you go Thanks Can we thanks go as far as we yeah. hardly no, read it? No we're done it? Nah We're done We hardly read it uh, Oh you want to oh, Another, another level uh, But like we, we read it's it off, we, do, we do read it often <laughs> Layers, <laughs> Layers. Uh, send, us, send us an email please Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au uh, You can also email Hello at backchatstudios.com.au yeah. We have a new website Which Mumba Digital puts together for us it's mm. bloody good if you haven't seen it it's yet fucking exceptional you remember you remember back in the day right where you used to set a home page for like a web- website that you visited frequently yeah you remember bookmark, doing that? bookmark or, yeah no no so as soon as you open up your oh yeah, yeah Explorer, you can still yeah, do that yeah can, but yeah. people people don't anymore. Well, maybe not on brave you don't but no well do you what what's your home page google but you can reset it to backchatstudios.com yeah. please if you do that just let us know. It'd be Great. nice to know. Uh, let's read some emails, of course. Uh, this is from Wyatt. Hey, lads. Just a quick one from me. So I hope uh, I'm glad you picked Daniel. Ric- Hang on. Let me just start again. Just sure. a quick one from me. I'm so glad you picked Daniel Ricardo as the number one pick for your fisting session in Geelong. Also, big ups to Danny Rick taking some time out from racing to do some fisting. As Dave Goggins would say, stay hard. Who's going to carry the boats? Cheers, Wyatt. <laughs> Daniel Ricardo fisting. What is There's, happening? There oh, is yeah, a there likeness is Pierre. to Pierre. Pierre. Oh, Jesus. Gotcha. What is Danny that Rick? warning that keeps popping up there? It's really fucking pissing me <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah. I thought Danny Rick was coming me. back to, uh, to fist. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't Great. get that. Nice one. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could have had that up while I listened to you butcher that. Anyway. <laughs> I would have made it a fucking lot better. Uh, this is from Trish. Hi, boys. Especially Trish. Dan. Trish, yeah, mate. Um, yep. yep. She's in hospital. I was Bad watching cancer. the Wildcats last night. No, she's night. out now. She's fucking beating it. She's beating it. Well done. I was watching the Wildcats last night on mm. Thursday mm. and glimpsed your face quickly, Dan, Dan, as the commentators were pointing out the Eagle Boys at the basketball. Of course, uh, not the pizza company. I think they went under. Um, the the yeah. Eagles Boys. Oh, yeah. uh, of course, you're not as famous yet, except with us Backchat fans, yet. living like your fan dream, Dan. I was. It was nice looking back, seeing the Eagles Boys there and seeing the Wildcats at the same time. Uh, at least the teams are playing better now. I went to the Melbourne United game and was thrilled with the win. I'm still angry at the coach for not playing Jesse after all the hype of his 450th game. That was outrageous, by the way. They didn't play him. They didn't play him. 
all week there's congrats Jesse on your 450th um, the bench. all the videos he sat on the bench the entire game he not one minute wasn't injured they just didn't play him so Fuck, I did, didn't know about that yeah, that's, that's fucking poor behavior did they win that is, no they didn't win Good. they could sucked in yeah they, it was um, yeah it had a bad run for the Wildcats uh, my life is right. yeah they're, they're going well okay. my life is returning to normal after all my treatment so I'm enjoying life nice I have a trip to Perth planned early January to catch up with some family and friends oh, shit, yeah. go, and go to the Wildcats and the Scorchers yes, up, Trish. which we are doing some work with uh, I'm planning trips around the country to watch the Eagles next year as I missed out on so much this year all the very best to the fistball team. I'm sure you're, you'll all have loads of fun. Have a wonderful Christmas and all the best for 2024. Trish. Love Trish. Oh, Sent Trish. from my iPad. We love Trish. We do Shit love Trish. Trish. We Trish. bloody love Trish. Get all aboard the Harley Reid train, Trish. It's a yep. better start. Just book your... Actually, you know what? Book, book your, your tickets. tickets to September at the G. Book your tickets. Or actually probably early, early October. All right, here we go. This is from Taj Marbles. Taj Marbles. Taj Marbles. Uh, G'day, boys. Taj Marbles here. Just want to give a shout out to Dr. Beckett at Perth Vasectomy Clinic in Leadville. <laughs> Snip after, stories. After two kids, it was time to close up shop downstairs. Wow. Of course. Uh, when you're laying there on the table, mm. about to render manhood useless, mm. what, what else do you talk about? Mm. Uh, the podcast I listened to on the way in, Kepler's episode. Uh, absolutely professional. Hopefully, you gained a new listener to the podcast or sponsor, which would be nice from Dr. Beckett. Oh, right. And a okay. snip sponsor would be nice. Wouldn't this, it? So, he's so just talking is, about Ke- the Kepler Bradley this episode. Is important from Taj Mahal is, is when you're out there, ladies and gentlemen, who's listening along, tell someone who needs to know. Mm. Tell someone who needs to know to tune in the back chat. Tell them about the Western Fisters. Yep. Tell someone who needs to be introduced to fisting. If someone who needs fisting in their lives. I think you should be directing them to this podcast. I think so. You already know this. You're listening to it. Mm. Thanks, Taj. Uh, I actually also think I had Dr. Beckett. So that would have been a nice sort of round. Same both of you digging yeah. balls. Yeah. Mm. Uh, both. Hey, ha- Fist. Well, Taj and Dan. Oh, I thought you said yeah. Dan's got more than one. What, one dick? <laughs> two <laughs> dicks. <laughs> well, both. Two we dick do Dan. have two balls still. Two yeah. They don't yeah, take they don't any balls out. She's no. got cooked, are you? Yeah. Fucking hot. Uh, yeah, hey, you've got about yeah. a thousand beers. This is from, uh, this from, this this from Bushy. Uh, hey, Fisters and Fingerer, and then in brackets, Dan. Uh, just catching up on all things fisting. <laughs> okay. And holy fuck me, Dad, I hear the fistball tournament is in Geelong, Yes. where I'm from. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I have my work Christmas party on December 15 at the Geelong races, so I'll be genuine dust on the big first day of the 16th. Well, I might just have, have some Vegemite before you go to bed. I but I do want to be involved. I don't give a fuck if it's giving first uh, fist rub downs, taping fists, being a hype man for the fisters, or fuck it, even just doing some fisting myself. I yep. don't care. Nice. I just want in. Cheers, Bushy. Uh, is coming down as hydration officer slash water boy. Bushy is Bushy. fucking hired. We've hired him today. Yep. He is our water boy. So welcome to the team, Bushy. Well done, Bushy. If Thanks you are in Geelong and you are listening and you want to be involved and you have a house with 15 bedrooms in it, please get in touch. We yep. will stay at your house. Scrooge McDuck, if you're listening and you live in Geelong, please. <laughs> Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck. McDuck. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow's episode of the Backchat guest show is one of the more unique uh, and most interesting chats we've ever done. Is it? Jack Thompson. Oh, Jackie boy. This guy is an ultra cyclist. So I think he mm. calls himself the ultra yeah, cyclist. Yeah, Jack well, Ultra Cyclist Thompson. It's like his, it's his nickname. I'm never skeptical going in interviews, but I was like, I don't know where this one's going to yeah, go. Same. Very good. Very good. He basically, um, how do we sort of approach so he, this? He set, he set a Guinness World Record for cycling. Yeah, and then but he thought, the story's bigger than that. Like, he wasn't oh, a cyclist, he turned himself into an ultra cyclist. Like at an he, adult. Yeah, he, like he, he pretty candidly speaks about um, an addiction process that he went through. He had to get himself out of that and just turned himself into an ultra cyclist, the best in the world. And he does that for a living now. Goes around and goes, I'm going to break that world record. I'm going to eat 100 chicken nuggets on my bike and I'm going to do that. Did I'm going to film it. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. <laughs> Fuck, but that he, he's a Guinness World Record holder yep. and he's coming to Perth to uh, ride the Bibbleman track. The no, the it's not the Bilman, it's the what's that other one that goes from Perth to Albany? So that's with B. Um, Binda Hindi, I think it's called mm-hmm. Butter, Butter Mindy, <laughs> <laughs> Butter Chicken Track. <laughs> okay, um, do you know what he also did? The, one of the more fascinating feats, he started the Tour de France oh, this 10 is good. days after the, the crew. Does he, does he beat them? You'll have to listen to find wow. out Does on the next them? episode of Backchat. <laughs> Shit, that'll be interesting to listen to. Uh, uh, while, while you're still... It's very... Hey, I'm going to have to get... <laughs> while you're getting that track up, do you the reckon... Butter chicken track. Butter chicken track up. I mean, world record, I've always thought... Munda Bindi. Munda Bindi. Munda Bindi. It was close. Yeah, close enough. 
I have always thought it'd be pretty cool to have a Guinness World Record. Yes. It's. Do you know what? We we thought about this after we spoke to Jack. Yep. We should do a weekly segment where Hammer tries to break Guinness World Records. But do you know what I think you could do? What? The long fingernails one. Oh, <laughs> that was always the best one. He was like carrying him around in a bag. <laughs> it's so he rank. Just never cut him ever. <laughs> you, have you seen this guy? Yes, mate. And they I curl. have seen the guy. They curl, they curl around. Oh, it's so gross. No, it's fucking disgusting. But basically, Jack said, like, um, <clears throat> he probably wouldn't do it again. There's a, a from an ultra cycling point probably of view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like a lot of admin you have to, you know, to get the world record. Like he, he solo Guinness. rode for seven, seven days and it was the longest um, covered in seven days. Yeah, that's a pretty and mighty so like fine effort. They had to, like, he had to keep documenting it and he just yeah, wanted okay. to ride. Whereas I feel like we could, we could probably get into some areas for you. I reckon we probably could. I Is think that what you're suggesting? In 2024, I will break a Guinness world record. Wow. Whoa. Stay with back chat. Wow. Anything come, nothing come to mind straight away? Nothing right. comes to mind. Nothing comes to mind straight away. Well, are you thinking eating? Nah, because I'm still going to be playing football, I think. Hopefully. What else are you good at? <clears throat> That's a good question. You know what? For Christmas, maybe if you're lucky, we'll get you the 2023 edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll try and pick, one. We'll pick one. one. The thing about the worldwide eaters is that they're all, they just do it all the time yes. really well. I mean, I eat all the time, yes. but not to that extent. I will find something that I can do. Okay. I can do lots of things. Yeah. Let us know what, what am I the Hamish best in the yet. world at? Yeah. 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 I'd us, love to hear some suggestions. Write us an email, hello at backchatpodcast.com. You or just write to us on socials, backchat. Maintaining it. Double underscore. What you can also do yeah. on. Uh, Longest back- direction. <laughs> That'd be tough. Backchatpodcast.com to you forward slash fines is where you can <laughs> send a fine in for you, mate. You can basically just record it in. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, us. Trying to communicate with India, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can send a fine in, just record it. It's so easy. Hold down a button, talk, it sends it to us. We're going to listen to some now. I'm a proud Victorian here. Scully, $5 fine. Hey. At the end of last episode, hmm. you called a palmer a palmy. And you talk about how Victorian you are, and then you go say that shit. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, look, I, I, I will apologise, but oh, Dan, you know this. Mm-hmm. You know I don't give a fuck about food no. in one bit. You always get corrected. I always order a palmer, but it like they just say, "Oh, the palmy." Yes, I will get that. What is it? Just pa- say chicken parmigiana. It? Is it parmigiana? I think it is palmy. Like it's spelled with an I. Right, so it's a palmy, isn't it? No, it's parmigiana. That's the problem, and that's where the the Victorians get us because right. it is palmy. Technically, it's parmigiana. It's a palmer for you. Yep, I call it a palmer. Yep. I just don't care enough, whoever that was. So sure. I appreciate the fine. I'll take it on board. Mm. I'll put the five dollars in the tin. Is it? Yeah. So it's Parmigiana. Yeah. So well, I'm not sure how I'm wrong there. Other than being a Victorian, I do apologise for the Victorian. <laughs> you can't help that. But Parmi. Yeah. Is that how it's so I say I, I, <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Tomato a palmy, tomato down, potato. Down to the paddock. G'day legends, it's uh Duncan McCockiner here. Mm. Duncan. Just sending a quick fine to Kepler Bradley. Yes. Um, if you could speak at one volume for the, the entirety of a podcast, that'd be great because you're going whispering into the microphone, you've got to turn the volume up so you can hear it, and then you're all of a sudden yelling into the microphone and you're blaring it through the speakers. Not good enough, Kepler. Do better. Two bucket there, mate. Two dollars to Kepler. Yeah. I'd like to extend that two dollar fine on the back chat audio team. Yeah. That is what we employ people for here, Daniel. I'll have a I'll have a chat to the right person. But uh, and you'll and you'll be enforced to fine. If yeah, of course. If you um if It'll you apologize. talk to Kepler in, in person, the fluctuation in volume is, is great. Because he's such a good t- storyteller. Yes. He like he, he lures you in the and then he like, hits yeah, you with great. one. Yes. Yes. So it is very good, but I understand podcasts. I will uh, I'll make sure that message goes across. Okay. Just uh finished watching the World Cup finally. Mm-hmm. Up the Aussie. Yep. Just a, a five bucket for Skeeter saying we had no fucking chance with its world champion. <laughs> He's pissed. He's, <laughs> he is absolutely <laughs> fucked. Brilliant. Skeet. He's fighting Skeeter. <laughs> There's no irrelevant to this podcast whatsoever. <laughs> and that's bloody beautiful. That's that's good. Good. Did, did Skeet write him, write him off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah on the early days. Did, yeah. yep. Ages ago. Wow. We were shit to the start of the tournament. Hey, boys. Sweet Muffy here. Just sitting at home watching the cricket final. 24 from 68 balls required. Looks like we got it in the bag. Scoey, I reckon Skeet sneezed a smack on his naughty little bum for saying that Australia had no (laughs) chance. So I reckon all of us thought Australia had no chance. Yeah, here we are. Come on. I don't know what the fine's worth. Maybe a couple bucks. But I reckon a little smack on... Skater's cheeky little bum would be worth. <laughs> He's doubled down on it that. too. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, have fun. I'm having fun. We're all having fun. <laughs> Everyone's fun. Everyone't blind. The cricket That's finished at midnight. I couldn't love that anymore. Night. I yeah. couldn't love that anymore. It was brilliant. Please send more pissed fines. Pissed fines in. Because that's exactly what we're Skeeter on his cheeky little butt. <laughs> well, that is exactly what we're here for. I thought we were done. Oh. I turned it off. Yeah. Travis Head was playing and missing. And we're like three for 40. I was mm. like, we're done here. Yeah. Next minute. That man single-handedly yeah. won us that final. That catch was insane. Oh. Changed the game. Comes in, then bats like a king. Yeah. It's great. Brilliant. Hey, lads. I wish it was it's Tess. Tess Tickle here, and I'd like to find <laughs> AFL $2 because we don't need two days of AFL draft. Just make it to one day. Short and simple. Oh, my God. Bye. Fair enough. Like I agree. Tests. I hate the two-day Oh, that's thing. a well-made point. The two-day thing sucks. Do, it well. Do you know how they could change <laughs> it structured the and not make it two days? Argument. Firstly, they don't need an, uh, an hour of preamble right. just get straight into it and don't give every team five we, minutes we, we yeah. did need the preamble today though because we saw some of the great draft footage all the time when Jonathan Brown was at the Palm Beach floor <laughs> oh club and that a kid's getting a, kid a smack on his yeah, he's well, double a fist of his own backers down the front of the <laughs> yeah. team oh my gosh. and he was absolutely feeding to it mm. well, it was some of the great footage we've ever yeah. seen. So we don't we miss out on that. If we don't it's know. true, yeah. but the the five minutes thing, like if you cut it all down to three minutes, the NBA does three minutes each pick, yes. right? That just helps move things along. Put some pressure on them. I would. They like know what they're doing. Be, half I would the time. like it to be a minute, especially in the first round. Right. Like what the fucks? Everyone knows what's going on. The number you know, one. You, pick. The number one pick. You should have at five seconds. What were West Coast doing? Stuff. Mate, around? they literally they weren't even talking. They were just sitting there waiting. Tell what's waiting for a phone What call. shits me the most is that it goes for five minutes and then it said ex, ex, uh, ex, extension. Yes. Like, oh, extension required, extension given. Yes. And were they extending it all? Did West Coast get back time, into the Don't first put a time round. limit on it then. So Stupid. Are you, are, you, are you happy with just Harley Reid from the first yeah. round? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because we'll, we'll get another top three pick probably next season. Yes. I'd say we're not... When, well, like, if I'm being honest, we're, we're probably going to be... Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Oh Happy my gosh, it's Buckleva. I did Dan. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Oh my Hooray. gosh. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. 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 What have you got? I have so much Buckleva. This is my favourite treat. We know. This is amazing. We know. Oh my Indy goodness. Knows. Indy reminded everyone it was Dan's birth. I forgot this morning. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I wasn't going to forget, mate. Um, uh, can I blow out these candles, please? I've got, go, got a badge. I'll put, oh. Oh, stick that on there, I'll buddy. Put the badge birthday on. boy. Um, oh, how does that make you feel, mate? Baklava. I don't quite know what, what that is. What is it? It's a honey and flaky pastry treat. Uh, you know, it's it's a Greek. Italian. It's it's. I think it's sort of debated over who. It's European. Do you want to put it? Do you want to put a country on it? Uh, it's Greek. It's is ours. It, we own is it. Is it Greek? Yeah, I'm gonna respect. blow these candles because it's making me sweat. Even sure. More yeah. Time. Make a wish. Oh, he did him. All in one. The wish will come true now. Dan Const. Thank you so much. What a treat. <laughs> Dan comes in next week and he's six foot nine. Ripped. And he's ripped. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Blow my candles. Don't tell him. Now it's not going to happen. Idiot. Dan Sully, not know the, the rules. Dan's, Dan's, the Dan's at Loftus Center on Monday just dunking, doing windmills. <laughs> Dan plays with the scorches now. Oh, this is well, very good. That's it. That's Thank you very much. Yeah. What um, a treat. Well done. Can we eat some of that? Absolutely. Yeah. Bye, everybody. All right.